Netcasts you love. From people you trust. This is Twit. Bandwidth for Android App Arena is provided by Cashfly at C A C H E F L Y dot com. This is Android App Arena, episode 65, recorded for Wednesday, September 30th, 2015. Android Experiments. Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of Android App Arena. I'm your host, Jason Howell. One of the things I love about Google, aside from all the cool stuff I get to play with, is the fact that the company places such emphasis on being open, on allowing its users to learn from its hard work behind the scenes and fostering a community that's okay with sharing their own lessons with the world as well. A fantastic example of this open source mentality is Google's recent creation called Android experiments. Google roped in a handful of independently developed apps that in this awesome showcase show off ways that Android developers can push the limits of traditional app development and get super creative in the process. Better yet, everything found on Google's page for Android experiments, which you can find at androidexperiments.com, is also open source, meaning other Android developers can peek in, take a look, and learn a thing or two that they can apply to their own creations. That code can actually be found on GitHub if you're interested. Some of the apps are more along the lines of demonstrations as opposed to fully featured offerings. That doesn't make them any less enjoyable to play around with. Let's take a look at a few of my favorites from the Android Experiments collection in today's roundup. Remember the spirograph or a kaleidoscope? How about a digital representation of those, but with the added bonus of using your front or rear facing camera as a color source for the evolving creation? That's exactly what we have here with an app called Elements. Go ahead and dive into the settings first of all, and you'll see a number of tweaks that you can make here. You can pick which camera to use, of course, how you want things to animate and at what speed, and you'll see significant results by picking your shapes for the animation. You can play around with fills. Do you want your shapes to be created with simple outlines like a typical spirograph? And once you have things dialed in, you can jump into the sandbox and start to draw whatever you like with your fingers. Once you release, those images are going to launch off and dance, they'll swirl around based on the animation settings that you entered. Now as things animate, you can point your selected camera at different things inside the room, and the dominant colors received through the camera will determine the hue that is drawn at that moment during the animated sequence of events. It's a nice flashback mixed with a little zen for good measure, and uh, it's easy to waste a lot of time playing with elements. It's free in the Play Store right now. Now, speaking of zen, here's a little game that its developer created specifically to help provide that anxious somebody with a calming distraction. The game is called Kintsukuroi, after the traditional Japanese art of mending broken pottery called Kintsugi. Kintsukuroi is a three-dimensional recreation of that art, complete with soothing Japanese music to kind of set the mood just right. On a 3D space, you're shown the outline of a broken piece of pottery with one single attached piece. You can swipe the image left or right to rotate it around that space. Below are a number of broken pieces that also rotate along with the main piece above. When you think you've found the right piece, you can tap it to rotate it around to its right orientation, or you can simply drag it up where you think it should be mended. If it fits, you'll hear a satisfying ping when you let it go, and you can piece it all together and move on to the next level. You can free play, or you can switch to the time trial modes to kind of boost up the difficulty. It's like a tranquilizer of life disguised as a game. Find Kintsukuroi for free in the Play Store. Let's keep the Zen train rolling. This next app is minimalist, but absolutely beautiful. It's called Grove. And with it, your device becomes a window into a randomly generated landscape, complete with interactive elements that allow you to redraw your surroundings at random. The landscape surrounds you, so as you rotate your device around you, 
you'll see the ever-changing combination of mountains, trees, a vast skyline, and a bright, punchy sun shining in the sky. Each of these elements can be interacted with. Don't like the mountains? You can just tap them and you get a small selection of alterations. Maybe you like rolling hills as opposed to tall pointy peaks. Or how about replacing those mountains with a field of trees? Or wipe it all out and you find yourself in an open plain. You can change up the sky as well, opting for a nice dark starry night as opposed to a bright harsh daylight. And even the sun can be manipulated. It's a wide open sandbox and you can actually move through it by tapping on the path and walking through your space. And it's all created completely at random, so no two scenes are alike. And the animations between states is actually kind of breathtaking. Now, if they could work in some Google Cardboard compatibility, this would be an even better journey than it already is. Find Grove in the Play Store for free. If there's something to know about the Android experiments, it's that you truly don't know what you're going to get. In a sea of traditionally categorized apps in the Play Store, these experiments tread new waters and push the boundaries in undeniable ways. This week's big app also happens to be from the Android Experiments collection, though prepare your ears for a bit of noise. Check it out. All right, you had to know that after three easygoing Zen picks, I'd undo it all with my fourth pick. It's called Cosm. And it qualifies as a big app because it was just added to the Android Experiments page a few weeks ago. Cosm is the kind of app you'll probably want to wear headphones with, or not, as you'll undeniably hear in this demo. This is an experimental music sequencer that utilizes gravity to determine when notes get played. Explaining the app is difficult because so much of it involves experimentation and playing around with its different modes. Beginning with a blank slate, I can switch to hold mode to create stationary orbs. Then, either in default mode or emitter mode, I can drop orbs that will actually fall towards gravity, depending on how you have your device held. As they touch each other or those stationary orbs that you dropped, sounds are emitted. This 360 mode allows me to drop a container into the space that holds some of those orbs inside. And beyond all of this, I can adjust the waveforms that are sounded, none of which sound very pleasing to my ear, by the way. And over here are some effects that you can apply to the sounds as they're emitted, like delay or extra distortion. If this is actually music, it falls somewhere inside the glitch genre of EDM, and that is certainly an acquired taste. But thankfully, if that appeals to you, you can record your compositions inside the app and listen to them while you fall asleep at night. Okay, so it may not be pleasing to the ear, but it's fun trying to crack the code of Cosm. Find it for free in the Play Store. You're going to want to head on over to AndroidExperiments.com to see all the apps that I didn't feature today. There are a bunch of them, and they're all a lot of fun to experiment with, from a few unique location-based apps to a number of oddball Android Wear watch faces, and even a couple of apps that tap into the physical world, like controlling an interactive drawing plotter. You find plenty to keep you occupied, at least for a bit. Google is adding to the catalog regularly, so definitely check back from time to time because you never know what you're going to find. Send me your favorite apps and categories to arena at twit.tv, or you can always post those to the subreddit at androidapparena.reddit.com and share them with me and the rest of the world. The show records live every Wednesday around 4.30 p.m. Pacific following Tech News Tonight at twit.tv slash live. And if you can't make the live taping, the show will always appear later in the evening in the feeds and on the show page at twit.tv slash arena. All right, that's it, folks. Thank you so much for joining me today. My name is Jason Howell, and I will see you next week in the arena. Yeah.